Hi, I'm Dan, and today we're going to look at using Tailwind classes in Elements. Now, hopefully you already know that Elements is based on Tailwind CSS, so it's essentially a front end for Tailwind. So you don't need to know anything about that. You can just use Elements as is and drag and drop everything and build everything up, and it works great, and you don't need to know any code. But if you do know a little bit of code or you um, want to start using some extra Tailwind classes in Elements, then you can do. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's incredibly powerful and incredibly flexible. So I've got a test project set up here and I've got some notes down the side here of classes that we can use. So um, let's just dive straight in and show you how this works. So I've got all my, uh, I've designed this page and I've got my objects here and these are all in the page. And if I click on the image, I get all the usual things. Um, so I can resize the image, I can add effects to it, change the styling, things like that. And then down the bottom here, we have the advanced area. And in here, there's a CSS classes uh, box. And we can paste CSS classes in here and they will be applied live to the page. So for example, um, if I just take uh, animate bounce, now this is a Tailwind class and we get those by, uh, let's have a look here. So this is Tailwind Docs and all the Tailwind classes are listed in here that you can use. Um, so we were gonna use an animate class. Let me just find this. So I go to um, animation and it's here it's given me some example um, animations that are built in. So bounce, pulse, spin. And if we go back over here, I'll take this class, Animate Bounce, and I'm just gonna paste it straight in here. And you'll see it instantly gets applied. And now that's bouncing, which is pretty cool. Um, and I can obviously do the same thing with ping. We'll paste that in there. So you can write in classes like that. Let me, um, oh, we can put in spin. Oops. Uh, that's better used. The spin works on a flex element. That works better on there. But here we are. Right, so animate ping. Let me go and view this in the browser. And if we inspect the element, and let's find our image. Uh, you can see here it's um, essentially got a lot of classes on it already to center the object, set the position of it, etc. But you'll notice in here there's animate ping, which is the class we added in. So um, the custom classes get added directly into the element. So there's no wrapper going on on that. It's being applied directly, which is pretty cool. Um, right, let's switch that off because we don't need that pinging at us. Um, let's have a look at some other examples. So um, I've got a hue rotation here. Let's just take that part first. And I've selected the container. And if I just paste this in here, it's going to um, rotate the hue of everything in, um, in that container. So, And you can change the degrees. I'll do 180, so that's like on the color wheel. It's going to shift all the colors around, uh, which, is, ooh, which is pretty cool. Um, and what we can add to that, we can add a hover effect. Uh, I've just got a note here. And you can proceed this in front of um, most classes. So if we only want this to happen on hover, we can put that in there. And now when I hover in, it then uh, does the effect, which is nice. And uh, we can also set the duration. Now these are all Tailwind classes again, they're all utility classes, so you can just add them to the object and it builds these things up. So you can string a lot of classes together and do a lot of nice things. Now duration, I've got it set to 1000, so this will happen over uh, about a second. So now when I hover in, um, the transition happens slowly rather than instantly. So let me get rid of that and you'll see, boom, and let's put that back in. And now it kind of fades in and out, which is very cool. Um, let's get rid of that. And let's have a look at another, um, another effect. We've got this skew effect here. And if we go to the, um, the docs page on Tailwind, you can see the classes are set up to specific 
um, degrees. So you've kind of got zero to 12 here and it goes up in increments. You've got one, two, three, and then it doubles six and 12. So we can take one of these classes uh, like this, and this is X and Y there. So we're, um, let's see, yeah, we want to do it on the X axis um, and we can paste that in and it gets tilted. Now, if we want to tilt it the other way, we can put a minus behind it. Um, I don't know if it says in here you can do that, but that is how you do it, um, just so for, you, for your reference, so you know. So if we put a minus there, it's going to skew it the other way. And you might be thinking, well, that's great, but I, what if I want to skew it more than 12 degrees? Well, we can put that value in brackets like this. So for this um, there, now that's 17, so we can go 45, and it really slants it, you know. Uh, let's take that off of there. And I can even do it to the card. If I go down here, paste it in, boom, you can do that. And uh, we could put in the bounce animation. So you can just um, string these things together. Now that has removed, uh, I say string these things together, but that has removed <laughs> the, um, the, uh, the effect. So what I would probably do there, if I wanted this to work, I would apply the skew to the card and then come up to the flex item maybe and then apply the bounce um, outside of that. So not all, all classes there are going to work strung together, but a lot of them do. And it's kind of a bit of um, trial and error until you um, understand Tailwind a bit more. So there we are. Uh, so we've got those. Um, let's have a look. What else? We've got, um, there's obviously some image effects here. So we could up the contrast. So I've got my background container, boom. And it's given us a really, uh, that's really popped that. And if we go to there, you can see it's telling us uh, what classes are built in um, from zero to 200. Um, and there, so if you read the docs on here, if there's something you're interested in, go and read them, and then it will tell you kind of what options you've got. And you can see here, there's uh, again in brackets. So if we want to go beyond, um, let's see, dot 25. Yeah, so if we want to go beyond um, what the pre-built classes are, we can just do um, this. And that is a lot of contrast there. So there you can see. So you can do some crazy stuff should you want. Um, but yeah, you can check out the docs. And you can see down the side here, we're on contrast. Um, and there's other things like grayscale. And we've looked at the hue rotate, invert, saturate, sepia. So again, I could take sepia and we could just paste that in there. Boom. And it gets applied. So um, pretty cool. Uh, what else? There's, I mean, there's so many uh, utility classes in here that you can use. So it's worth having a look through here um, and familiarizing yourself because while we offer a lot of things built in, you know, um, if you, we've got, uh, like we've got saturation here. So I could desaturate this and this is an effect here and this is all WYSIWYG, but we don't offer everything like the contrast or the sepia I've just showed you. We haven't built those into here, but they're easy enough to apply should you um, want to. We've obviously got blur there and things like that. Let's switch that off. Um, yeah, so there's, there's cursor. So we can change the cursor on rollover. Let's have a look at the docs. Again, it's showing me all the cursors that are available and I can look at the class and um, we can just use one of those. So what have I got here? I've got cursor, uh, let's use cursor weight. So on my button in here, pop that in, cursor weight, and now it changes the cursor. Oops. That should work, cursor alias. Why is that one not working? I think that is correct. Maybe it's not supported in Safari. I'd need to, oh yeah, it should do this. I don't know. Let's have a, let's put a pop it on here. Oh, I've copied too much there. Let's get rid of that. There we go. I'm not sure why that wasn't working on the button there. Let's have another look. 
let's try in Safari no it doesn't seem to like that now I don't know why um, I'd need to look into that but uh, seeing as this is a live demo I won't look into it now and find out why but there's probably a good reason for that and you know can troubleshoot it later um, so we've also got there are breakpoint classes as well so this hue rotate here for example let's pop this back on the background because it's easy to see um, we can proceed these with a breakpoint um, class there so I've, got, I've set up my responsive breakpoints in here or they're pre-set up for you and you can see the names of them SF, MD, LG, XL and we're just using LG, MD and SM small, medium, large and if we we can set at what point this effect comes in so at the moment it's on all the views we can see it everywhere but if we don't want it to come in until um, let's say medium and up what we can do is we can put medium in here and now you can see it's normal and we're now on small and it's still normal but when I go to medium which is the next breakpoint up you'll see that the uh, it rotates so boom so um, yeah so that is how you can just uh, apply those if you only want certain effects or different effects at different breakpoints so we could do hue rotate 60 and this will be on all of them and then when we get to the medium size MD uh, let's do we could rotate the colors again and we could say 180 so on the smaller size we've just got we're rotating it at 60 the hue and then when it jumps up to MD here we're going to rotate to 180 um, and then you know we could do LG which is large hue rotate dash zero and then we could go oh, might need to make the screen a little bit bigger there I think this is right yeah boom there we are then when we go to um, large it goes back to normal so you can do some fun stuff with this and it's very powerful once you get um, used to using these and knowing how they work. All right, that was just a quick demo to show you how you can use um, Tailwind classes inside of Elements to go a little bit further. And this is really just scratching the surface because there are so many classes in here and you, know, you can apply it to um, absolutely anything and really get full control over things especially if you want to start building some custom components then um, you'll want uh, you'll want to come and have a look at this documentation uh, a lot because it's obviously got everything you need in here um, yeah so uh, just a reminder custom components are over here you can add an HTML block drop it into your page and then you can go down here and start customizing just like we've done so um, let's just just to show you we'll put we'll put a bounce in here you can see this is using um, you're saying text large center the text and setting a color text brand 500 but we could set that to white and let's put the animate bounce on there and you can see we've got a nice little bouncing um, some bouncing text let's put it in uh, just below there there we are um, so yes you can have a lot of fun with that as well and build your own little custom things really easy once you start getting into uh, these tailwind and using these custom classes you can really um, take things a bit further all right um, I'll wrap this tutorial up. I hope that was useful and gives you an insight into Tailwind and kind of how to start fiddling around and taking advantage of it. All right, uh, that's it. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye. Yeah.